I don't trust the room. Okay. The wireless. Sounds good. So for, those, for those who are interested, I told Aaron you should keep this up just for a few days and then take it down. The sheet, this sheet, particular sheet, oh, yeah. is just going to be on the website for a few days. Why? Why is it a few days? I don't know. I'm not 100% comfortable. First, I'm not 100% comfortable in my mastery of the material. Uh -huh. And um, I'm not, uh, it's, it's not, not part of the Navi sequence. Okay. And it's a, it's, it's a far out shear, as you'll hear. It's very, very far. It's wild. It's wild, but it's, uh, it's fascinating. Now, in, in the Gemara, there is something, um, the Gemara refers very often to something called Megillas Tainus, which literally means the scroll of fasts. And Megillas Tainus in the Gemara is a Brisa from the era of the, of the Mishnah, which lists all the days, and Megillas Tainus is really a misnomer. But it's all the days in which one is not permitted to fast. The, uh, throughout the time of the, um, of, of, the, of the Mishnah, they were compiling for so many tsarists that Klal Yisrael had experienced, and so many times that uh, Kodesh Baruch Hu had, had Nisim, the Flores, and Yeshuas, and in order to make sure we recognize that the Kodesh Baruch Hu saved us from all of these tsarists, they decreed that these days to be minor Yom Yom Tevin, there were usher, and there were days usher to fast in those days, usher to be to eulogize, hesper in those days. As as the these these days became more and more and more, it became a little ridiculous. And every day was another tzara and another yeshua. So they were mavato megillas tainus. They they canceled megillas tainus with the exception of two days. Two days of the original megillas tainus remained. So they are called purim and chanukah. Purim and chanukah were part of the original megillas tainus. Those two days remained. All the others were canceled. Okay, this is the Megillas Tainus. We come across the, the expression in, 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 in Mishnah and Gemara. That's what it's referring to. So those two days we cannot fast. You're not, not allowed to fast? All other days we can. Not allowed to fast. But other days, all other days we can? Sure. I don't know. You can't fast on Shabbos. Yeah. yeah. Shabbos and Shabbos. Yeah, break on the weekdays you can fast. Yeah. The, um, I thought we don't fast on two for oh. Or those extras. Well, so yeah, there, are, there are other days that became well, minimum. Because uh, someone has your set up to the oven, and I told them, I don't know that you're supposed to fast, you better ask them the ropes that you should not fast. Right, right, but those are, those, that, that's the whole Chamisha Sema'ah, it's a minimum, it's, it's, it's a minimum, it's a minimum. The, um, okay, but then there's another Megillus Tainus that we really don't, it's, a, it, a, it's another scroll, which we don't really find mentioned in the Gemara. But well, it's mentioned in the Gaudim, in the Gaudim, and this is a literal Megillus Tainus. Megillus Tainus is a scroll of fast, days in which we're supposed to fast. Uh, days which you never heard of that we're supposed to fast. We heard of the days, we heard that we're supposed to fast on those days. It's a scroll of fast that we, you, we, you won't find it in the Gemara, but you will find it mentioned in Gaudim and Rishonim that there's such a thing as Megillus Tainus. The Bahag, for example, about Allah Hizkidolos, um, it mentions it as something misman hatalmud, something from the time of the of the Gemara, the Megillus times. As we'll see, we don't really keep that much there there also. But I'll give you as a matter of introduction. Um, we know that a chasam, uh, the kala, is supposed to fast on the day of their of their chasam. The reason they're, they, they, the main, the primary reason they're supposed to fast, besides all the drushes that rabbis give, is because it is a day, it's considered their own private Yom Kippur, it's a day of Mechila and Slicha, so therefore they're supposed to fast. On certain days, in which we're not supposed to fast, like Rosh Chodesh, so then the Chosna Kala don't fast. Right. However, the Ramah in the Shulchan Aruch says, if one of those days, fast falls on, let's say, Rosh Chodesh Nisa, which is mentioned in Megillus Tainis as a day in which you, one is supposed to fast, despite as being Rosh Chodesh. So if a person is getting married in Rosh Chodesh Nisa, even though it's Rosh Chodesh, the Chosen is supposed to fast, because this date is mentioned in this second Megillus Tainis, which they often refer to as Megillus Tainis Basra, the second Megillus, the second Megillus Tainis. As Rosh Chodesh Nisan is a day that is supposed to fast because a tragedy happened on that day. Two very important people were killed on that day. Anybody know who? Who was killed on Rosh Chodesh Nisan? 
You happen to look and you see that the head is pussing in the terror. Right? None of an avil. None of an avil died on Rishchidosh Nisan at the time of the Chanukas Hamishka. Okay, so take a look. Some of you have a have handouts that have an, a, a page that says intro. I just told you the intro. We'll skip that. Um, some of you start with page one, others just turn to page one. On the bottom of page one, we have Simon Tovkov Pei in the Shulchan Aruch. Simon Tovkov Pei in Shulchan Aruch Arachayim says it has a whole Simon, Yomim Shemesanim Bahem, the days in which we fast. So the Machabra says, Elu Hayomim, the following day, Sheiru Bahem Tsaros Labosenu, which, which uh, travails Tsaros happiness <coughs> to our uh, ancestors, Veroi. It's an important word. Veroi, it's appropriate. He doesn't say chayov. Roi, it's appropriate with his adois bahem to fast in those days. Afal pi shem exosam rosh chodesh. Even though some of them come out on rosh chodesh. And yesh mishomer brings out a dissenting opinion. She yis ad yesh mishomer. Oh no, it goes together. Afal pi shem exosam rosh chodesh. Yesh mishomer. There are those that say she is anu bo. That they should fast. And the Ramah is in Vitov Shalola Hashlam Berosh Kodesh. For those of you who are not familiar with the structure of the Shulchan Aruch, the, um, the black print is Rabbi Yosef Karo, and the, um, the italics, the Rashi script, is the Ramah of Moshe Isilish. It's a very quick historical background. Um, the, the early 1500s, when Rabbi Yosef Karo came out with his Shulchan Aruch, which means a set of table in which he, um, he, he was the art scroll of his time. Uh, he he, he, he uh, uh, distilled all of the, um, the halachos and the shas and came out with a set of table right, of Shulchan He actually was criticized for, you know, uh, for presenting halacha for the feeble-minded. You know, nowadays, this is, this is like a primary source in Kamohu, but. Uh, then he was criticized for, for being, being like art scroll. But the problem was that Rabbi Yosef Karo right, was a Sephardim. Now, why is that a problem? It certainly wasn't a problem for the Sephardim, but the, his Sefer was becoming so popular and so accepted among the Ashkenazim that the Ashkenazi postkin were upset because a lot of his Piske Halacha were more appropriate for Sephardim. He based his Piske Halacha on three primary sources, primary sources, not totally, and that is Rabbi Yitzvah Galfasi, the Rif, the Rambam, and the Rosh, Rabbi the Rosh. It's two to one, as far as right? And therefore, his Piske Halacha were heavily weighted towards what was the Sephardi Halacha, Sephardi custom. So the Ashkenazim were very, uh, very upset. So they got a German Godel named Rabbi Moshe Iserlish, Reish Mem Aleph, popularly known as the Ramah, to write a sefer, a counter sefer, showing where the Ashkenazi halacha differs with the, uh, that's the primary purpose of the sefer, differs with the Sephardi halacha. Interestingly enough, he called his sefer Hamapar. Now, Rabbi Yosef Kara sefer was Hashulchan Aruch, the set table, and he called his sefer the tablecloth. Right? And I don't know exactly when this happened, but a very, very long time ago, they started to publish both of them in the same sefer. So what we call now, when you buy a set of Shulchan Oroch's, you have the Shulchan Oroch and the Mapa together. And the way it's normally done is the black print is the Shulchan Oroch and the, the Rashi script is the, is the remote. The Ramah adds on that even those who say fast, but tov shalol lahashlim berosh chodesh means don't complete to the fast on rosh chodesh, only fast partially part of the day. Okay, next page. Continuing in the Shulchan Aruch, and I will just, we'll just read some examples of those days that, that the Shulchan Aruch says are days in which uh, tragedies happened, and we should fast, it's appropriate to fast. Be'echad b'nisan, the first day of Nisan, Mesu b'nei Yaharam. Our own sons died, we know, when they brought to Keteris. Ba'asarabo, on the 10th day of Nisan, so that's your Rosh Chodesh date. On the 10th day of Nisan, Miriam, um, Mesa Miriam, the Miriam died, I mean, at simultaneously in the Stalik Habe'er, we had the Tzara of the Be'er Mayim, which was Baskos Miriam being removed. 
Um, let's skip to the next um, underline. The Shiva bin Mar Cheshvan, the seventh day of Mar Cheshvan, is just an example. Ivru Ebe Sid Kiyohu, when the Babylonians and Nebuchadnezzar conquered, they destroyed the first base of Mikdash, and Sid Kiyohu, the last Melech, uh, tried to escape and he was captured. They blinded him, the Shaftu Banov the Enov, not before they slaughtered his sons in front of him. That happened on the seventh day of Mar Cheshvan, the appropriate day to fast. Bishmon of Tevas, on the eighth day of Tevas, Nirtava HaTorah Yavanis, Bimei Talmai HaMelech. The Torah was translated into Greek in the days of Talmai the king. This is the famous Septuagint, which um, it was considered a great tragedy to the Jewish nation, which is a separate discussion and as to why it was such a tragic time. Okay, it's the next underline that we're going to be discussing. Well, with Tisha, though, another day that we should appropriate to fast is the ninth day of Tevez. Why? Lo no da, it is not known, Ezu hi hatsara We don't know why, just fast, hmm. on the ninth day of Tevez. No, no, that it's not known, Ezu hi hatsara she'irabo, hatsara occurred on, on this day. And this is very, very cryptic. And that means two days in a row fasting. Yeah, and what about a sarbatavis? Yeah. <laughs> Which you really have to fast. Yeah. That's three days in a row. No, at ninth, you said nine. Eight, nine. Eight, nine and ten. And the tenth day. The, he doesn't mention here a sarbatavis. A sarbatavis is his man on the view, we have to fast. That's a sarbatavis. They, uh, but he's eat at night. Listen, the Muslims allegedly do it for a whole month. They eat only at night, right? The, um, Okay, so this is the mystery that we're going to be discussing. So as I, as I said in the email, this entire shear is straight from Dr. Schneer Lyman, who's one of my heroes. I admire him very, very much. He's a, um, he, he's a, a real professional historian um, who's a true mentor. He learned from the mirror, and he's a real, he's taught in Yale, he's taught in Harvard. And he's a real, real professional mentor. And um, his, his, his teachings are also very popular. He has a very popular style. Like everything is like a Sherlock Holmes uh, 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 mystery, and uh, we have to figure out the, uh, the results. So, this is one of his more famous shiurim, which I think he calls the Jewish Pope. The, um, if, you, if you ever go on, if you go, if you, if you go to wyuntogra.org, you could download a lot of his, a lot of his shiurim. Is why I thought if it's why you tore that org or oh you tore that one of those. Either why you tore that org or those are in English or in English. In English, in English, yeah. And uh, his his most kishmak one is the one about the morales guy. Yes, yeah, it's just straight straight enjoyment from beginning to end. His name is Dr. Schneer Lyman, L E I M A N. Two Lyman. Okay. Um, all right, so what happened on the ninth day of Av, the Shulchan Aruch says, Lo no da, it is not known, Ezu Yitzora Sheirubo, which we'll see is a difficult articulation. But look at the, at, at the first commentary on the right, the Taz, I've underlined. So the Taz says, Tema Gedoka, this is a great wonder. Why, Rabbi Yosef Cairo says, we don't know why we fast. But Isa Beslichos Shalasar Betevis, in the Slichas of Atar Bilteva says the Tesbo that on the ninth day, Mes Ezra HaSefer. Ezra HaSefer died, the Sarah Ian Rav. He said, really, you have to look into this a lot. Why? It's clear in the Slichas that Ezra died on this day. That must be the, the reason why. And if you look on the left hand column, in the Magad Avram, these are the two classical commentaries on the Shulchan Aruch, says the same thing. Now Slicha says Shemes Ezra Hasefer. The Ezra Hasefer died on that day. <coughs> Turn the page. I have a photocopy of the uh, Slichais, a portion of the Slichais. Reprinted with the permission of Armstrong. The um, the um, so you see the underlying part. This is the Slichas of Asarbite. This. It says, so Amti, Petishabo, I was reproached on the ninth day of this month, the Chlima of a with humiliation and disgrace, 
So Chosach Me'olayim was removed from in the eel, the cloak of Hod, but Sefer, of, of, um, of uh, the mantle of glory. And I don't know how he translates Sefer, diadem, what's diadem? A crown. A crown. Torah, Torah, Bo Hanosi, Nimrei Shofer, removed, torn away from us, was the one who gave us beautiful words, who Ezra Hasofer. There you go. So it says, well, the, the, this, this, this slicha talks about all the terrible things that happened in, in Tevez. First it says, the eighth day was the Septuagint, ninth day Ezra Sofer, and then it goes on, Yom Asiri, the, the, what happened on the tenth day of, of, uh, of Tevez. So uh, this, is a, this, this is a problem, right? This is, this is a very, very big problem. Um, So, the problem that both the Taz and the Mug and Avram have on the Shulchan Aruch is, is there seems to be a very obvious, there seems to be a very obvious answer. At the same time, and I don't have this photocopied, but the, um, I don't have it here at all, I don't think, but in the original, the original quotation of the of this Megillus Tainus Basra, the second Megillus Tainus, right, which was quoted first, the first time that we quote it is from the Babel of Skidolos, which is in which is in the ninth century. That's very early. It's the first time we have the Babel of Skidolos. I didn't bring the copy of what he said, but it's very clear what he says. He says that on the ninth day of Tainus we fast, Lo Kosvo. Ma, lo kosvu loma, I don't remember the exact words. They didn't write why. Now notice, first of all, he doesn't say, we don't know why. He says they didn't write why. Right? bo Ezra Hasofer, and Ezra Hasofer died. So it's very, very clear that, the reason, that this mystery has nothing to do with Ezra Hasofer. Very clear, the mystery has nothing to do with Ezra Hasofer. That's why the Shokan doesn't even mention it doesn't even mention Ezra HaSefer because that's not the mystery. That's not the mystery. Why in the world, why, and why in the world would we want to keep Ezra HaSefer's um, uh, um, passing secret? <laughs> why should it be secret? So Zinjar, we had this in Eibshitz, in the Yaris Devash, has a very creative, it will be a difficult um, theory as to why we would want to keep it secret. Because Ezra HaSefer is often compared to Meshach Rabbeinu. As Ezra Sefer Ezra described the, the, the renaissance of Torah at the beginning of the second base of Mitosh, what he did for Torah and Klai was compared to what Moshe Rabbeinu did in some very concrete ways I don't want to go in or to over here. So Rabbeinu actually said, just like by Moshe Rabbeinu, no, no, nobody knows where he's buried, but we wanted to keep at least Ezra Sefer's date secret, so be comparable to Moshe Rabbeinu. And Moshe Rabbeinu's date of Petir is far from a secret. I mean, it's one of the most famous yard sites ever, right? Okay, but Rebens and Ayvshitz says some similarity between Ezra and we wanted to keep a secret. But still, the, the, the original Megillah's Tainus, quoted by the Bahad, says clearly that they didn't write the reason, they didn't write the reason, and Ezra Sefer died. So two separate things. He says, I don't know, but he could have just said, we don't say why. Who? Shulchan Yeah, yeah that's a, it's a difficult articulation. It's, a, it's a definitely a, dif a difficult articulation. Now, to show you how, how people were just overreaching to, to try to figure out this mystery, none other than the Ravid, famous Ravid, of Avram ben David, right? Um, in, in, in his uh, Sefer HaKabola, in the year 1180, Seitz says that a terrible tragedy happened on the ninth day of Teves in the year 1066. 
it was a um, a great Spanish godal named Rabbi Shmuel Hanogit, Rabbi Shmuel the Prince. He was called Rabbi Shmuel the Prince because we know in that era, the um, a lot of the a lot of the uh, Spanish kings had Jewish advisors, and Rabbi Shmuel Hanogit was one of the most influential people in 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 uh, in Spain in Granada. So the king, he was the right hand man of the king of Granada for many many years, and he died. His son. His son, Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Yosef Anogid, Rabbi Yosef Anogid, took over. And Rabbi Yosef Anogid had many enemies. And basically, uh, it was a terrible tragedy that, that the Muslims assassinated this uh, son of Rabbi Shmuel Anogid together with virtually the entire community in Granada, the entire, entire, entire Jewish community in Granada. It was the first Muslim massacre of the Jews. And it happened on the ninth day of Tevis. And the Ravid says that even though Megillus Tainus was written at the time of the Gemara, centuries before this happened, but that the authors of Megillus Tainus knew that a terrible tragedy was going to happen. They knew Baruch HaKadosh. A terrible tragedy was going to happen on the ninth day of Tevis. So they declared, it a, they declared it a fast day, and for obvious reasons, they did not want to write down so that the son of Rabbi Shmuel HaNogid should not read when he's learning, he's learning Gemara, what's going to happen to him. Uh, so obvious reasons why they didn't, why they didn't write it down. Um, you know, in Kabbalah Hunakadu, if this was told to us by true nothing we'd accept, obviously, there's nothing wrong with being skeptical as to that this was the reason for that. Also, despite the tragedy, uh, the son of Rabbi Shmuel Hanagi was not the only great person who was ever killed or assassinated. You know, we have the Sarah Malchus, we have the fast days for that. And it, it, it's just, it's, a, it's, it's really a stretch. It really, really, really is, is a stretch. It's, let's go further. That's the rivet is the rivet is Orisha. Here the Ramad, and we mentioned before, the co-author of the modern Shulchan Aruch, he has listen listen to his theory. He says that this is, must be what happened. Could you says could you imagine the tragedy for Esther Hamalko when she was taken by Achashverosh? Imagine the tragedy, and we know which month she was taken. Says the Ferris and the Megillah Tavis. So he says it must have happened on the ninth day of Tavis, even though the Megillah does not give you the tape, the, the, the Megillah does not give you the date. Must have happened on the ninth day of Tavis, and that's why they declared it a fast day. I mean, this is the Ramah. You know, we can talk about we can talk about the Ramah, but two things. First of all, there's no date in the Megillah. Secondly, what's the secret? What's the secret? The Megillus Tanis was written way after the Purim history. There was nothing wrong with saying that, that Jews mourned the day when the Holy Esther was taken by that fat pig, Akashverosh. Why, why wouldn't they have written this? Why was this held back? Okay, we'll try one more. We'll try one more. There was a great um, Spanish Godwin philosopher in the 12th century, Rabbi Avram ben Chia, who wrote a sefer called Sefer Bo Ibor. And he was a great astronomer. He was a great astronomer and mathematician, philosopher. You know, in those days, there were Kolbo, uh, everything. And he says like this. He says, if it's true what the Christians say, that Yeshu was born on December 25th, so he calculated that in the year that they claim he was born, that that came out to be on the ninth day of Tavis. Right? The appropriate day to fast. The appropriate day to fast. What's interesting, Dr. Lyman points out, is that throughout the 20th century, secular Jewish scholars grabbed on this one as the definitive explanation for the Megillus Tainus, for the secret of fasting on the tenth day of, on the ninth day of Tevez. It makes sense that it's a secret. We don't want to, uh, we, we certainly 
don't want to walk around um, throwing eggs at Christmas trees and and uh, you know telling uh, telling the Christians on your day of celebration we are in mourning and fasting on the birth of the founder of your religion. So um, therefore, they declared this day a fast day. He's saying that Yoshki was born on. He says, "Im divrehem emes." If their words are true, he doesn't know. I mean, he's living in the 12th century. It's quite a while, quite a way so after what they come. He says, Im divrehem emes, that he was born on December 25th. With his calculations, it was that, that the lunar calendar that year that they claim he was born would have been on the ninth day of Tavis. Okay? And that, that's, that, this, is, this is Rabbi uh, Abram ben Chia, and this was the populist. Um, understanding of the mysterious line of Megillus Tainus of this mysterious fast day throughout the 20th century. Um, the problems are, even Rabbi Ram and Chia, is we have no, mis we, we certainly have no Misora when this man was born, or even who he was, right? And we certainly have no precedent of having fast days on the birthdays of evil mongers. I mean, <laughs> we don't have a fast day with. Haman was born, and when Hitler was born, and you know, Ashimov, I mean, where, where, what, what kind of precedent could there possibly be that they would establish a fest? I mean, there's all kinds of new things. There's such stretches, they're so far fetched. So, if you think that was far fetched, wait till you hear what may be the most plausible explanation for what's going on over here. Okay. Turn to page three. That's the same page where we had the um, we had the the on the, on the right the, the sleeve ice. So this is one from one of the commentaries printed in the back in the back of the Shulchan Aruch. One of the most famous poskim from the um, um, the early 20th century, late. Late 19th century, I believe, or birth, or birth Frankel to Umim. So, they take a look. You see, on the left-hand column, I have two brackets. Let's first see the second bracket. The second bracket is going to be a summary of everything we said until now, pretty much, in very briefly. All right. First, he quotes the Magen Avraham, Sif Kotan Vav, Uba Slicha Shalom and Yisa. Now Slicha, you have Shemais Ezra Hasayfer. Nifta Besido, that means this is, a mar this is a marginal gloss from Baruch Frankel to Umin. Hamaskalas, which Licha, the one that begins, Ezkara Motzak. Okay. Uva Halachos Gedolos, Hilchos Tishaba Betainis, Isa, we have Bezeh Halosha, begin quote. Betesbo, on the ninth day of Teves, Lo Kosvo Rabbo Seinu Al Mahu. Remember, we pointed out this is not the language of the Shulchan Aruch, Lo No that long that we don't know. But they did not write. Why? Mashma, they knew, but did not write. Uvo biyom, as you see also the second thing, and that day, Mes Ezra HaKohen, Unechemya ben Chachalyom. Okay, so he's pointing out that it seems to be two separate things. The Lokas were Rebbe Seinu HaMahu and Uvo biyom. The same thing we pointed out. Uvo Sefer HaKabol on the Raivet, the Muva, is brought down. Shebet Tes Teves, on the ninth day of Teves, Nerag Rabbi Yosef HaLevi. Hanogid, Rabbi Yosef Halevi, the Prince Benosha, Rabbi Shmuel Halevi, Gam Kahal Granada, Vichol Haboyim Me'artzas Rechokim, Lirois Teirasa Ugedulase Nehrugu, people who came to see the greatness and the Torah of this Rabbi, Rabbi Yosef Halevi Hanogid were, were, were killed by the Muslims. Yehuyan Sho, look there, Viachri Yisrael Kosa Bezer Halosha, and then he wrote, the um, this is the the Ravid, the old me may Rabbi Seinu Akadmonim, the early Rabbi Shekosvu Megillus Tainus, that wrote Megillus Tainus goes through Tainus Betishu Betevus. They decree the Tainus on the ninth day of Tevus. We don't Yadanu on Mahu. We don't know on what. Mikan Yadanu. Now we know Shekavanoso what the um, what the Ravid meant. The Beruach Hakodesh in Yom Zesh. Shekavanoso and Beruach that their intent was Beruach Hakodesh for this day. That's what the Ravid really felt. It was it in his time that was considered a terrible tragedy, and he assumes that happened on Testaves, and that was the original thing. But now let's go back to the beginning, to the first bracket. 
So if based on the Shulchan Aruch, noi noi da ezu hi hatzara, we don't know which sora they decreed. Nechta betzido in the marginal gloss, matzosi beksav yad. I found a manuscript, shabit tes teves that on the ninth day of teves niftar shimon hakalfus, shimon hakalfus passed away. Shehoshia es Yisrael betzara gedela that he helped Yisrael in the great sorrow. Bizman haparitzim in the time of those who were breaching, which is a reference usually to Christians, they were breaching the walls of Torah. Nikba yem misasai letainus elam Yerushalayim. The day of his death was decreed as decreed as a festive in the entire world in Yerushalayim. Okay, there is a there is a sefer. That with many, many, many versions called Toldos Yeshu, the history of Yeshu. Its authoritativeness is highly questionable, but um, it's, 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 there, there, are, there are newer manuscripts, there are older manuscripts, and there's an amazing story told in this Toldos Yeshu, in, the, in this Toldos Yeshu book. And it's, it's, you have to understand that the, at the, the, the original Christians were all Jewish. And this was a breakaway sect. And it was extremely difficult to ascertain who was, they were claiming to be Jews. And they said they had the right version of Judaism. You could go, you know, you, you could be in, in Shul right next to a Christian. You know, you're living next door to a Christian, he looks Jewish, sounds Jewish talks Jewish, and um, your children are playing with his children, and he believes in Yashka, and uh, there's almost no way, there's almost no way to tell. The early Christians, um, their, their, their Sabbath was Saturday, and uh, they spoke Hebrew, and it was very difficult to tell the difference. According to this Toldos Yeshu book, there was a, a Tana whose name was Shimon. His name was Shimon and was a very talented and charismatic person. And he volunteered to infiltrate the Christians, the Christian community, become one of them for the express purpose of breaking Christianity away from Judaism, moving their day of rest from Saturday to Sunday, making sure they had a different language and making it as different as possible from Judaism for the sake of saving Judaism. And this is Shimon HaKalfais that he is referring to. According to Todos Yeshu, this gentleman became Simon Peter, popularly known as Saint Peter, who became the Bishop of Jerusalem and the first Pope according to Toldos Yeshu. The, uh, according, to this, according to this theory that he's writing here, that this was the day, obviously this was the most importantly and best kept secret in the universe at the time, right? that, that he wasn't, uh, you know, was, was he secretly putting on filling in his back room, in his chambers, and nobody else allowed to come in, who knows what? But uh, the whole world accepted him as a Christian, and he made dramatic and drastic changes to Christianity for the sake of saving Judaism. And he died, obviously, one of the most special Christians in the world, with a glorious Christian burial. When he died, the, the Jews who knew were in mourning, and they decreed a fest on Tes Le'olam, Tes Tevis Le'olam. Rabbis, why are we fasting today? I can't tell you. Just trust us. Today is a tragic day. And um, that is the reason that Rabbi Frankel Tzumim found in, but he says, a manuscript for, to sh that, um, for the, for the, for the uh, fast of Tes Teves. Now, I'm going to show you something amazing. <laughs> Turn to the last page, page 5. This is a photocopy of the Gemara in the Sect of Abu Dazar. Are you saying then that he was really a Jew who was masquerading as a Christian? A from Jew, yes. 
And so the day he died, he was a front Jew? Yes. And he did this for the explicit purpose of separating Jews and Christianity? Yes. yes. This, is, yeah. this, is the claim, this is the claim of Toldos Yeshu. This is not Dr. Lyman's Chidush. This is the claim of Toldos Yeshu. This has been in manuscripts again. Who wrote Toldos Yeshu? What? Who wrote Toldos Yeshu? Very, very questionable. Its, it's, it's level of, of, of authoritativeness is highly questionable. Highly questionable. And, um, but based on that, it's clear that's what Abar Frankel to Umim is basing what he said, Is this Ksav Yad told us Yeshu? Or some other Ksav Yad? I don't know. I don't know. There is a, um, there, there is a manuscript from one of the Talmudim of the Shagas Arye, Rab Aaron of Armeiza, Rab Aaron of Worms, in 1836, where he also wrote this, that, uh, that uh, he saw in the Sefer Zechronos, Sefer Zechronos, does that mean the history book or what? Um, the, um, that, that, um, that, 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 that they, they don't write, they, this, this thing, that Petira Shimon HaKalpaini, Shimon HaKalpaini, Shehishlam LeYehudim, Umuvan Lama LeKosvo, and it's understandable why they didn't want to write the reason for the, for the fast. Um, in one of the manuscripts of Toldos Yeshu, one of those that's printed in 1701, right? One of those is printed in 17. The first manuscripts that we have nowadays of Toldos Yeshu is from the ninth century. In in one that was printed in 1701, it says Beferish this, Kavu Yom Nisaso Vehu Testeves. Vayichtov Shimon es hachukim. Shimon wrote the laws for Christianity. Vayishaneva, vayishane eso aleph beis le abc. This is in the manuscript, the 1701 manuscript of again not a very authoritative source. But look at page five. Do they think he wrote the New Testament? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, okay, one second. The Gemara, the Gemara here in the Buddhism and the view says something disparaging about the Romans. It says something disparaging about the Romans. And look at Rashi, which is the lower right here, the underlying part of Rashi. The Ksav Velashan Shal Romian. The the um, alphabet and the language of the Romans meuma acheres barulehem because it's, why why is the Gemara disparaging them because their language came from a different a different nation acherem tiknulehem kol sifrehem others established for them all of their svar what does Rashi mean by this now you see on the bottom in small print you won't depend depending on which version of Talmud we have, you know that there was a lot of censorship of the Talmud, most of it self-censorship because we're afraid of, of, of Christian reaction, and virtually all references to Yeshu were taken out of the Talmud, of the Talmud Bavni. A uh, very famous Gemara in Gitten that people learned on Tisha B'Av, where um, in our, our version it says, Poshea Yisrael, the, uh, you know, the, 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 reb the rebel or the uh, Jewish rebel, something like that, but in the earlier manuscripts it says Yeshu. It says Yeshu, so it's a simple, a simple example. Um, so here, on the bottom, there's a censored part of this Rashi. This Rashi, which was very cryptic, you know what I mean? So somebody else gave them their language and wrote their books. So this part, this bottom part, is from the uncensored version of Rashi. All right, so you have to, you have to see which, which, uh, which, which edition of the Talmud, um, I think this is the Telman edition. Will we see this in the art schools? I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but the Telman edition, um, I believe, put this, put this in. They, they have the insertions. You can also buy, there's a very small pamphlet called Tisronos HaShas, mm -hmm. the omissions of Shas that have, have all the censored things. Okay. Um, whatever. 
Okay, like five words in. Kisav aloshem acherem tiklu lehem kol sifrei ta'uso. Right? Yechanan, Paulus, and Peter, behem Yehudim hoi. Lashen, what Rashi means by Lashen, Rashi says, who, who, who grammatica, who halatin, shemedavrim bo hagalochi. Hem shinui, shinu, they changed it, the imku haloshen, not sure what imku haloshen means, they deepened the language. The also lahem hevel, and they made up all kinds of nonsense, bechashvam bifnayatzma, in order to consider them separate, ulasalgam, and remove them, me'al Yisrael. Veloshe kofru, they were not heretics. Kile tevosan shel Yisrael neskavnu. Their intent was for the benefit of his Yisrael. El mipnei shero Yisrael bitzar uvedochet. They saw that Yisrael was in such pain and pressure. Mitarmise Yeshu, because of the trickery um, uh, um, uh, of Yeshu. Osu atzmam kihilu heim imay bikadeshus. They made it as if they were with him with their holiness. Vitzivu alehem, how cold. Vitzivu alehem, and they and they commanded them. They gave them all kinds of commandments. How cold can mefurash besiper tulias Yeshu? Everything according to what is written in the book of the hanging of of Yeshu. So it's clear that Rashi seems to be Dr. Lamas says it seems that Rashi is also referring to this Toldos Yeshu manuscript which um, we know the first published manuscript was in the ninth century. Rashi, Rashi um, it was in the 11th century um, person. So uh, Rashi uh, was born in 1040 or 1080, something like that. Um, so the, 